water to the wind. And this morning, we're blessed again by the Spirit of God among us. Okay, perfect. That's just too far away. A uh, few announcements this morning. Uh, we have a, our regularly scheduled business meeting for council that was rescheduled because of last week's events uh, to, till tomorrow evening. You should uh, receive an email this afternoon with uh, the link to get to the council meeting along with any rate. So we thank Paul for that work. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for all that you've done for us on that because the sprinkler system worked perfectly and we could have lost so much more than simply our organ if it hadn't been for the sprinkler system. So, thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. So we gather today for worship. Uh, as I said, gather because uh, that's what the people of God do, but we also gather in the midst of uh, some great tragedy for us, and so we may find ourselves with many questions this week. We might have, in fact, many of us probably have more questions than answers at this time. Nonetheless, we hold fast to the promise that God does not abandon us, no matter what we face. I'm going to not use the microphone. So today, as we come to worship, I want you to listen to the words of the Psalm of David, Psalm 46. And this is a song, a song of strength, a song of hope, and a song of conviction. God is our strong refuge. He is truly our helper in times of trouble. 
For this reason we do not fear when the earth shakes and the mountains tumble into the depths of the sea, when its waves crash and fall and the mountains shake before the surging sea. There is a river whose streams may glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God lives within the city, it cannot be moved. God rescues the city at the break of dawn. Nations are in an uproar, kingdoms are overthrown. God gives a shout and the earth dissolves. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come, witness the exploits of the Lord who brings devastation to the earth. He brings an end to wars throughout the earth. He shatters the bow and breaks the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted over the nations. I will be exalted over the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our strong.
our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Eternal God, amid all the turmoil and changes of the world, your love is steadfast and your strength never fails. In time of trouble, you are for us a sure guardian and rock of the faith. Direct us in all our doings with your gracious favor, and extend to us your continual help, that in all our works begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name, and finally, by your mercy, bring us to everlasting life.
What makes us different, though, is that we as Christians make sense of our pain in light of our relationship with God. So today, we're going to take some time, however much time is needed, to give expression to how we're feeling as God's people, as people in loving relationship with God. What are we feeling this week after the fire, after the loss of our organs? midst of everything else that's going on in the world right now, how are you feeling now with all of this on top of that? I want this to be a safe place right now, in this time, in this place, for us to be honest, and for us to be open, for us to be candid, I'd say frank even.
once I heard that everybody was okay, the building was still standing. And then this week, it's uh, more of a loss because, yes, <laughs> more of a loss because um, I was so looking forward when COVID was ended to be back in the church. And for me, it was, I did my private concert. Um, it was my meditation time before church started. And that I was so looking forward to. And I know we'll come back, but I love listening to music just by myself. First, of course, was the initial shock of it all, a feeling of helplessness, and then extreme sadness. Our organ has served us well many years, given us much happiness, and I feel so sorry that it's gone. But in cases like this, I like to look for the silver lining, and that silver lining is that we still have our sanctuary, and that no one was hurt or injured, Pastor Jill or Marsha. Um, uh, <laughs> on a positive note, we will get our sanctuary back and restore it to its beauty, and for that I am thankful, and I would like to help do that. Um, my prayers are with everyone, Pasha especially, uh, and I want to thank Paul and the fire of my department for saving our church. I wrote mine down because I would never be able to stand up here without writing it. Um, when I when I think of our church, three words come to mind. Love, faith, and hope. I love Emmanuel. I've been here my entire life. I love the love we show each other in good and bad times. And the love and peace I feel when I am here at worship or during the week. We have strong faith in our God and each other. We have demonstrated that we come together in tough times and are able to overcome any obstacles. Hope for us is essential. Hope will make our current situation more bearable and allow us to persevere. The fact that the cross in the sanctuary still hangs at Emmanuel means that God is with us. hurting for sure um, but I have faith in our congregation I have faith in our leadership and I have even greater faith in our God we will recover hashtag Emmanuel strong I lost my baby. That's what I look at. But when I walked in that church this morning and I saw that cross, like you guys said, that gave me such faith and such hope. Yes, the organ is completely charred, um, but so much is still there. Even those choir folders are still in the back pew waiting for you guys to come back to me. Um, it's going to be a long time since I'm going to sit on that organ bench again, and I'm truly thankful I wasn't sitting on that on Monday afternoon. I can tell you that much. I'm thankful for everybody here who's reached out. So many friends have reached out. So many people have asked me, are you doing a restoration fund? I want to give. So we have such love that's not only here in our congregation, but everywhere. So we will make it through. Bear with me on that keyboard. And... Um, Thank you for being 
my rocks because you certainly are. Easy Street, sir? Christians? I miss that term. <clears throat> How do I feel? Oh gosh, this person, people, feels humble. Extremely humble. I was in my pajamas when I got the phone call. I didn't take his call. I'm sorry. I won't do that again. I didn't take his call because I was working and I was on the other line. I didn't take his call. I didn't say, hold on my pastor's on the other line. And then he called Leah. I really should have known. I told her, answer the phone. She didn't get it in time. It's not her fault. But then I got a voicemail. <laughs> and she, the church is on fire. And I was like, oh my God, I gotta go. I ran through the house. Poor Leah probably didn't know what to think of her chaotic mother. I was still in my pajamas. I do payroll from home. So I get here and all these people are here, all the smoke. And then we can't go in and I keep hearing all this stuff. You can't go in and then you can go in. And you, we rushed in. We rushed in to see the damage because that's what you do when you care about something. It's just like a child. Your child gets hurt, you go and you look at what's wrong with your child because you have to fix it. So Monday was a whirlwind, council changed, we all got very busy. Tuesday's the day that was difficult. Two, pastor said to me Monday night, are you going to need me tomorrow? 
Are you? No. Not. I'm fine. I'm gonna be. I want to sleep in. I'm fine. Yeah, I wasn't so fine. The waterworks happened. Tears. What did I do? I called him and said, I do need you. So he talked me off the ledge. Tuesday was the worst because all the memories kept coming back. I saw the pictures. I saw the men. All their gear on with sweat dripping down their face and explaining to us what had happened and what we need to expect. And they were saying things like, we won't turn the church over to you until. And I'm just standing there like, what? The church is not ours right now? This is so hard for me to concept or comprehend. I don't understand. But things had to get done before we could come back and we could go in. This whole week it's taken me a long time to understand this process. There's still an investigation going on. That is why we can't let anybody in there. That's why the stuff can't get touched. It can't get touched. It can't get be removed. And I am truly sorry to those who have any personal items in the choir loft. As soon as we are able to get them, we will. I promise you we will, but we just can't right now because of the investigation. That's it. It's hard for me, just as it is hard for you, and we will try and answer as many questions as we can. But the investigation needs to go well so that we get enough insurance money to protect Emmanuel. So, Walter Lilly couldn't be here today, but I did text with him yesterday, and I want to share his story. He said that I could. So, he said, I was at home, and the scanner is always on. I heard them saying they couldn't get a hold of a contact person. So, I got a hold of Pastor as quickly as I could, and then I called Fire Alarm to let know Pastor was on his way. Funny thing is, it's one of my dad's old scanners. Maybe he is still looking out for his old church. I believe Mala is looking out for his old church. I believe everyone is looking out for our choir loft. I do believe that. I believe that we've got a lot of spirits up there and they help us and they guide us and we will get through this together. And as Steve said, a new phrase came about. We have to use it. We are Emmanuel Strong. I can't say good morning anymore. It's got to be Emmanuel Strong. Thank you, everybody, for understanding. Thank you everyone for sharing how you're feeling, what you're thinking. We've heard, heard a lot. A lot of us are in different places emotionally, mentally. It is true to say that we all deal with the tragedy and trauma in different ways, but it's important for us to remember that we aren't alone. In times like this, we have each other. We have our church family. We heard about that this morning. I think everyone spoke about that. So in times like this, that we remember the commitment that we made when each and every one of us was baptized. That's what holds us together as a family, that baptismal commitment. We promise to support one another, to pray for one another in our lives together. We take that promise seriously at Emmanuel. I see it on display today. I've seen it on display for the whole time that I've been here. You welcomed me into your family and have prayed for me. I prayed for you, and we will pray for one another and support one another in this time going forward, not just because we're baptized into Christ together. That does hold us accountable, but because we are people called by God to love one another, we do it as well. 
Right now we need each other, but even as we need each other, we know that most of all we have something far greater to rely on. Our very name as a church attests to that. Emmanuel, God with us. We are strong because God is with us. We are Emmanuel strong. What gives us strength in the face of adversity, in the face of sorrow, in the face of calamity is the conviction that God is with us no matter what. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Not rain or drought, not sickness or health, not riches or poverty, not wind or fire, not life or even death can separate us from God's love. This love is what binds us together as God's people. This love makes us Emmanuel strong. This love assures us that God is with us. For it's this love that raised our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead and the same love that promises us that united with Christ in the waters of baptism, we too have died with him and we too will rise to life again with him. Because of this love, we can proclaim the same old, old promise that thousands and thousands of years ago, our ancestor in the faith, that righteous man Job, declared, For I know that my Redeemer lives, and that he at the last will stand upon the earth. We know that our Redeemer lives, for indeed he has stood upon the earth, and he will stand again alongside us, and he stands even now alongside us, for he is with us even now, and in him we do have hope, and we have hope that gives us meaning in the midst of all of this time of trouble. We are not alone. God is with us. We are strong. We are Emmanuel strong. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, O God, creator of the universe, for your abundant gifts. The whole earth reflects your glory. All your creatures praise you. We lift our voices to join the sounds of the song of heaven and earth, of things seen and unseen, and praise of your glory. You alone do great wonders, and by your wisdom you made the heavens and the earth. You breathed your breath of mercy into us, your children, to hear from us a joyful shout of our own song. In the fullness of time, God, O oh God, our Lord God, creator of heaven and earth, you sang a new song, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is exalted by poets, musicians, and all of your saints. Your spirit is the breath of our music and song. Eternal God, God of the present time, of ages past, and of all that of the ages to come, we worship you. Loving God, God of all compassionate acts and of selfless caring, we welcome you. God of the church who brings us together to worship, to learn, and to serve, we respond to you. 
with thanksgiving, we remember your gift to us of our organ. Around it, you gathered us and filled our hearts with your love and our songs of praises. With it, you lifted our sorrows and made us glad in our celebrations. Through it, you led us to proclaim the gospel and the stories of our faith. Beside your word of law and grace, you guided us on our way with no other gift so great as the gift of music, led and spirited by our beloved organ. For all these things and for so many, many more, we give you heartfelt thanks, Almighty God. Today we mark and commemorate all this organ means for us, and we commend our memories, our sorrows, our joys, our hopes, and our dreams to you. We mark the end of this era in our life as your people and look forward with joyful expectation to the future bright with promise, relying with trust alone in the one who destroyed the power of death and made holy the resting place of death for all creation. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our High Priest and Blessed Lord, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you today and forevermore. We were going to sing, I know that my Redeemer lives after our reflection time, but the Spirit perhaps led me to pray a little bit too fast. So, Marcia, is it okay to do that one for the closing hymn, I Know That My Redeemer Lives? Okay. Or do you want to do both? Do you want to do both? Let's do both. Let's do both. Go right into the... Uh, go right into it. Transpose on the fly. <laughs>